Splatoon 3's Drizzle Season update is finally here, and it is packed full of all kinds of new features and content for you to enjoy. Whilst Nintendo has been promoting this update and sharing all of the new features and updates, honestly, it's been spread across a ton of different Twitter posts, videos, and more. So it's been highly requested that I create a video going over all of the major stuff you need to know about in this new season in one place, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to touch upon some of the more major updates, as well as some of the smaller things that you might not know about. So let's see exactly what the Drizzle season has to offer. Starting us off, two brand new maps have been added to the game with this update. First of all, we have Crab Leg Capital, and honestly, this looks like one of the best new map designs we've gotten in Splatoon 3. This one is incredibly solid with lots of different places to explore, lots of different paths, and even some grates that you can walk on above the stage 2 to get an advantage. This looks like a really great new addition to the game, and I've been having a lot of fun playing around with it so far. There is also Ship Shape Cargo Co, which again looks like an incredibly solid new map in the game. This one definitely feels like it has a lot for you to explore, so it's a really fantastic new addition. And whilst we have seen ship-themed stages before, this one honestly brings a pretty unique touch. It's got some really interesting, cold, wintry visuals to it, which is really cool to see. And yes, that pun was totally intended. So overall, these new maps have been an absolute treat to play within the Drizzle season. I highly recommend you check them out, as right at the start of a new season, they will be much more common. Moving on, in total, 10 new weapons have been added to the game with this new update. We have two brand new main weapons, which will be the Heavy Edit Splatling, which will have the Curling Bomb and then the Tacticooler, and then the Dread Ringer, which will have a Suction Bomb and also the Reef Slider. Both of these new weapons have been incredibly fun to play through so far, so I think you should definitely check them out if you're able to. We also have a bunch of new kits for you to enjoy as well. We have the Inkline Tri Stringer, the Gold Dynamo Roller finally has been added to the game, the Custom Goo Tuber, the Ballpoint Splatling Nouveau, the Sloshing Machine Neo, the Blob Blobber Deco, the Sorella Brella, and the Octo Brush Nouveau. So there's a pretty decent selection of new kits for you to play around with here in this new update. Some are better than others, honestly, but I highly recommend checking them all out to see which ones you really enjoy, especially that new Gold Dynamo Roller which we've been waiting for for so long in Splatoon 3. It is now finally here. Let me know in the comments section down below which new weapons you intend to play around with in this new update. Moving on, a new Salmon Run map has been added to the game. Returning from Splatoon 2 is Salmonid Smokeyard. Now, I did want to show some footage of me playing this, but sadly Nintendo didn't put it in the rotation right as the update come out for some reason. So yeah, I can't play around with this one in this video, but I'm showing you some footage from Nintendo's trailer of it. If you played Splatoon 2, you'll already be familiar with this one, but if you haven't, then you can definitely check it out when it appears in rotations. Just check the in-game schedule to see when this one will be coming up next. However, that isn't all for Salmon Run in this new update, as there will be some new Salmon Run unlocks that you can get by talking to the clerk in the building. Nintendo has basically added something new to every single tab here that you'll be able to exchange using your fish scales. Now, a lot of us don't have a ton of fish scales to exchange things, but if you have been hoarding them, then this could be a good opportunity to get yourself some new pieces of gear, some new banners, some new stickers and decorations and such, and of course the new slop suits of which they added free in this new update too. So yeah, there is a decent amount of new stuff that you can unlock from this particular menu in the game, and I highly recommend taking a look through to see what you don't already have so you can make some new purchases using those very elusive fish scales if you, you know, have any of them at all. But we aren't done with Salmon Run yet. We also have a brand new Grizzco weapon, which will be the Grizzco Julies. I'm showing you some footage here from Data Miner Cox over on Twitter as, as of me making this video, the big run hasn't yet debuted. But yes, there are some really cool new attributes to this weapon. For example, when you roll around, it will actually create mini explosions, which can take out lesser salmonids. Now, it doesn't have a really far firing range or a high DPS compared to some of the other weapons. It just seems like a good all-rounder, honestly, and it gives you a lot of extra rolls and such. So it's basically just like the regular Splat Julies, but kind of upgraded and given a lot more maneuverability. This will actually debut in the first big run of the season, which is coming up this weekend as of me making this video. So I believe from the first until the third, you will be able to try this new weapon out. 
something that I am incredibly excited to do as honestly it looks really, really awesome. Now earlier I spoke about new Salmon Run unlocks, but did you know there are a ton of other unlocks for you to get throughout this season too? Nintendo has added over 92 new banners which you'll be able to get, which I'm showing on screen currently. They've also added a ton of new decorations to the game that you can put in your locker, a bunch of new stickers too, and hundreds of new titles for you to collect as well. You'll be able to get these rewards randomly, I believe, so through the shellout machine, if you get lucky enough and get a jackpot, you might be able to get one of these really cool new rewards. I think you can also technically get them as a random reward from the catalogue too, so there's a few different ways for you to get some of these new unlocks, but yeah, it's really cool just how much Nintendo has added in terms of new content. I know some aren't as interested in collecting things like the banners and titles and such, but personally, I'm really happy that Nintendo has added such a high variety of new ones in this particular update, so we can have even more customization with our characters, which is always a good thing. There of course will be a new catalog as well, which you'll get at the start of the season, which will contain some new rewards and emotes for you to unlock. Now unfortunately, this catalog is half old stuff, I believe. It's from the first Drizzle season catalog, which is a bit of a shame. But if you did miss that catalog and didn't get to complete it at the time, then this could be your opportunity to get some of those rewards once again, which is definitely good. Now you can get some new gear in the catalog, I believe, and with this new gear, you might even be able to adjust it. Nintendo has made it so certain pieces of gear in the game are now adjustable, which means you can oversize your shirts and also flip your hats around too. You'll be able to see a little icon by the piece of gear in the menu, which will let you know if it is adjustable or not. Unfortunately, not every piece of gear in the game is adjustable, but the ones are, it's really cool to get this new level of customization in the game, meaning our Inklings and Octolings can look even more unique than ever before, which is definitely a really fantastic update in my opinion. Next, we have special Splatfests which have been added to the game. Now, whilst we don't know if we'll see any more this season, although it is seeming incredibly likely, the first special Splatfest we're getting is Deep Cut, which you've probably seen announced by now. Now, special Splatfests work a little bit differently, I believe, as you'll have an increased chance of getting 10 times battles, and Nintendo has even given out special banners for this Splatfest through the news section on your Nintendo Switch. Like I said, it seems like we might get other special Splatfests this season, maybe for Splatterween and some of the other seasonal events, so definitely keep an eye out on the channel if we do get any news about that. There are also a bunch of new challenges which we should see throughout this season. For example, the modded Rainmaker test fire, where you'll be able to get a special, stronger Rainmaker, Inkjets for everyone, which is kind of self-explanatory, Roof Slider Rally, which again is self-explanatory, Work the angles, which will have angle shooters everywhere. Tournament test run for getting ready for tournaments in the game. Barrel of splats, which will have lots and lots of splatlings. Swim it to win it, which will increase your swim speed up. And then Sheldon's dress up showdown, which will allow you to have random weapons and outfits. So yeah, there is a lot of new content to unpack within this particular update. Honestly, I know some people have been a bit disappointed by this update, but I feel like that's mostly because Nintendo didn't do a good job of promoting everything in one place. Whilst they did release a trailer, they missed out on some of the most exciting new additions, which was a bit of a shame. Let me know what you're most excited for down in the comments section below though. If you make it to the end, be sure to comment Splat Gang down below so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more.